Uh, this truly is a historic day. I don't think I've seen you dressed up since our senior prom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our one and only date together because no one else would go with us. I remember showing up in that sweet homemade million dollar man suit. Didn't you wear a cane mask? No wonder we couldn't get dates. To be fair, the theme of the prom was a masquerade. Eh, still weird. You have the list, right? No, I thought you had it. Seriously? I put it in the safe just like you told me to. Man, the way you treat that thing, you'd think it was the Magnet Carta. Did you say Magnet? Yeah, it's some really old, valuable magnet, right? Just get it out of there. <sighs> no one was going to break into a hotel room and steal an old piece of notebook paper from high school. It's not just an old piece of paper. That list has been the roadmap to our entire careers, and now there's only one thing left to cross off. Did you forget the combination? It might have slipped my mind. But don't worry, I wrote it down on my phone. Which is also in the safe. This is why I always said we should have got the list tattooed on us. No chance of losing it, and we'd have way more street cred. Yeah? Well, I'm gonna be getting a teardrop tattoo if you don't get that thing open. Wait, 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 let me get this straight. You remember your fight with Brooklyn when we were in high school, taking place in a WWE arena with a ring sold out crowd and commentators? The guy who can't remember the safe combination is questioning my memory? No, the guy who can't remember the safe combination is questioning your sanity. Whatever. I may have taken a few liberties with my story, but that is how I choose to remember it. Well, as much as I'd love to join you in rewriting history, that day is scorched into my brain because that's how I got my nickname, Trey. This is how it really went down. Okay, so maybe my memory of that day is a little off. Severe emotional trauma will do that. <laughs> but did I really say all that stuff about her grandmother? Yep. You had some serious rage issues back then. Did you also forget that's how you got your nickname because you were always seeing red? No, I remember. And then Brooklyn tacked on the hot head part. <laughs> Gotta give her credit for that. You know, the rhyming definitely made it catchier. Hot head red, hot head red, hot head red. Okay, okay, we get it. Have you figured out that's safe yet? <sighs> no, but I'm pretty sure I use the same combination I've always used for everything, which is... Got it. Finally. Was never in doubt. I'm sorry you were locked in there all alone for so long. Mommy won't ever let that happen again. There's something seriously wrong with you. You're just jealous. We should get going. We can't be late. Hey, we got a message from President Johnson. Do you think you impressed the most electrifying president in United States history with all your career achievements? Actually, you do. All the best on your big day. I'll be watching from the People's White House. That's cool. <laughs> but I, I voted for Kane. Hey, it's X-Pac. Just keep walking. We don't have time. We always have time for X-Pac. Besides, you can't just ignore a WWE Hall of Famer. I can. Trey. Pac! What's going on? Hey, guys. Looking good. You too. Thanks. I'm on this new mustard-only diet. As in mustard is the only condiment you use? No. As in I only eat mustard. I've already dropped like seven pounds. That's... interesting. But enough about me. This is your big night. I swear it was just like yesterday when I first saw you two on the indie scene. Yeah, at that point we were only a couple years in. And I was about 30 years in. But I could still go today if I had to. I'm telling you, this diet's legit. I guess you could say you can cut the mustard, huh? Anyway, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. So, thanks. I'm sure you'd have been fine with it without my help. Trey? I don't think I can say the same for you. You were kind of the drizzling craps back then, no offense. No, it's true. And I wasn't just a drizzle. 
I was more like a torrential downpour of crap. Red was always ahead of me from the moment we started training. So you drove all the way to Calgary thinking you were going to train with Bret Hart? I've done some stupid stuff in my life, but that takes the cake. <laughs> it wasn't our finest moment. <laughs> but since I had a dad who only looked at the rewards section on the credit card bill, we were able to stay in Calgary and learn from a former wrestler who, at least according to him, trained with the hearts back in the day. I think he just ran next to one on a treadmill once. So that's how you guys hooked up with Riley Flash. Yeah. After striking out at the dungeon, it was kind of our only option. Even though Riley can be a bit much sometimes, he gave us the foundation we needed to get here today. He also gave us ringworm with his dirty mats, but that's a whole other story. Mm. Catching up on old times has been great, but we should really get going. Besides, shouldn't we save some of this for our speech later? But we just got through all the boring backstory stuff. It really starts to pick up from here. I'm down for more. Hey, guys. It's so good to see you. Congrats on the Hall of Fame. This is really happening. It's not official yet. We have to actually make it to the building. They're not going to start without you. And even if they did, some of the speeches are so long, you'd still have plenty of time. Great. We were just telling Pac all about how we got started. Didn't we cross paths on an indie show early on in your career? We did, at a minor league baseball stadium in Memphis, to be exact. That's right. I knew you had it back then. Trey, not so much. Why does everyone keep saying that? Because you didn't know the difference between a wrist lock and a wrist watch? Speaking of wrist watches, we really should get going. From my experience, this day goes by pretty fast. So you really want to relax and soak in every moment. Lead is right. When I got inducted with DX, everything just flew by. Then let's get back to soaking. Lita, if my memory is correct, you were just in Memphis for an autograph signing, but Red had other plans. That's it. I'm leaving without you. You can't do that. We're a package deal, remember? Besides, look who's headed our way. Mm, great. I was wondering if she'd show up. Relax. I'm not here to start anything, so don't get your collective skivvies in a bunch. This is the one day to put any past differences aside and honor your achievements, so congratulations. You've earned everything that's coming to you tonight. What was that? Maybe she has a conscience after all. I seriously doubt that. Forget her. Let's get back to your story. I think L.A. was where I first saw you two wrestle in person. Remember? We ended up having that series of matches against each other. How could I forget? It led to one of the most embarrassing nights of my career. See you over there, Pac. It was great catching up. Red, Trey, congrats on the Hall of Fame. Thanks. I told you we shouldn't have stopped to talk to X-Pac. That took forever. It's going to be fine. And besides, we got a great diet tip out of it with that mustard thing. Red, I'm a huge fan. Can you sign this for me, please? Wow. It's been a long time since I've seen this. It was so inspiring to see you come out of nowhere and make that run to the finals. And that last match against Rhea Ripley was amazing. <laughs> Thanks for supporting me for so many years. It really means a lot. Sorry, everyone. We're running late. Afternoon, Red. <laughs> Commencing trip to your destination. WWE Hall of Fame ceremony. Please enjoy For the someone ride. who's in such a big hurry, you had plenty of time to stop and sign an autograph. She had a May Young Classic program from the year I was in it. I had to reward her loyalty. And we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that match versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, I hate these things so much. Then why were you in such a hurry to get here? Because I hate being late slightly more than I hate awkward social obligations. I mean, if one more person says something dumb like, look, it's red on the red carpet, I'm going to strangle them. Um, red? Well. There goes my opening line. <laughs> she gets a little cranky when she's nervous. Anyway, I've been covering the WWE Hall of Fame for almost 15 years, and I've never seen anything like this. We've had individuals, tag teams, factions, families, but never a pair of best friends inducted together. This is truly a special night.
It really is, Byron. But just because our in-ring careers are over doesn't mean we can't continue to give back to the business that gave so much to us. In fact, that's why I'd like to officially announce I'm available for commentary and hosting work. So, WWE, if you're looking to freshen things up around here, then you know where to find me. Are you trying to take my job? What? I'd never do that. Don't be so insecure, Byron. Okay. Well, that concludes one of the most interesting red carpet interviews of all time. Live TV, everyone. What was that? You're welcome for taking the heat off of you. And maybe I was auditioning for a gig. You don't want to stay involved in some way? No. When I said I was done, I meant it. Red. Trey. Velveteen. Congratulations. But just keep in mind, it's one thing to achieve your dreams, but you will never be the dream. Great to see you too. See? That's why I hate these things. You run into all sorts of people you have history with. That was super awkward. Yeah? Well, at least it didn't end with someone getting knocked out like back in the day. So, I'm not really going to talk about my time in NXT. Overall, it was great, but I don't want to give Rhea Ripley the attention after what she did. She could have ended my career before it even started. I still think you should have changed your name to Red Eye after that. And think of the marketing opportunities for airlines and allergy medicine that would have come your way. You left a lot of money on the table. Can you focus on our speech instead of bringing up bad ideas from the past? Bad ideas? There's another tie-in you missed out on. Please come in and save me from my idiot best friend. Hey, soon-to-be Hall of Famers. It's my old tag partner. That didn't last very long, did it? Unfortunately, no. I just wanted to say that I am so excited and honored to induct you tonight. We wouldn't want anyone else to do it. I mean, Undertaker would have been pretty cool. Or President Rock. He actually texted us today. Check it out. Can you please stop insulting Rhonda before she snaps your arm off? It's fine. Oh, now I can't find the text. Please tell me I didn't accidentally delete it. Rhonda's the perfect person to induct us. She and I had some intense battles when I first got into WWE. Especially that Money in the Bank match with the arm bar on top of the ladder. I am definitely going to mention that tonight. And I have to tell that story about Trey's first night on Raw. That was crazy. Do you think messages from the president self-destruct? Like, for security reasons? I don't know about that. Oh, I almost forgot. This was on your door. See you out there soon. What is it? It's a note from my parents. You haven't talked to them in years. No, my real parents. It says they're going to be at the Hall of Fame ceremony tonight. Wow. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. Between never hearing from them again after they sent me that letter in high school and then all those times I left tickets for them and they didn't show, I'd, I'd given up hope. But now I'm finally going to meet my actual real parents. This is so cool. Are you sure it's not some kind of misunderstanding? It, it has to be them. Look, they signed it the same way they signed the letter I got in high school. This really isn't the best time, but maybe we should talk about this whole thing with your birth parents. No. You can't do this! What's there to talk about? They must have finally seen me on TV and tracked me down, which is all thanks to you. You're the one who encouraged my big debut on Raw, remember? No matter how hard I hit her, which was pretty hard, You see my parents out there anywhere? I don't think so. Not that I'd know what they'd look like. I always pictured them looking like me, but older. And in my mom's case, more female -ier. All these years of leaving them tickets after I was signed to Raw, just hoping they'd see me on TV and show up. And now tonight, they finally will. It's unbelievable. It really is. a package deal. They always had each other's backs, and that was certainly the case when I faced off against Red in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And so it is with great honor that I induct the package deal, Red and Trey, into the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> no. Wow. 
Thank oh, you. Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you guys so much. All right. Almost 20 years ago, we were a couple of not so popular high school kids who bonded over our love of WWE and became best friends. But we never thought it was possible that someday we'd be WWE superstars ourselves, let alone stand on this stage tonight being honored as two of the very best of all time. By the way, I totally thought we could do it. He didn't. Going off script already, huh? Well, that didn't take long. Fine, where was I? Here we go. But one day at lunch, we made a list. This piece of notebook paper would become the roadmap to our success in WWE. It contained our goals, hopes, and wildest dreams. And it changed everything. Over the years, we added a lot of new things to the list, and pretty much everything got crossed off except for one huge final achievement. Get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And unless anyone in charge has a last minute change of heart, I think it's safe to say that will be crossed off in a little while. I'm not gonna say this is a bigger achievement for me than it is for my friend, but let's be honest. When I first got to WWE, not many of you thought I was Hall of Fame material. What he's trying to say is he wasn't exactly the most respected superstar in the locker room. <laughs> well, let's face it, no one other than you liked me. But a lot of that was my fault. I was brash and confident, but didn't have the experience to back it up. Sure, I had a universal title win, but it was mostly considered a fluke. And when it came to the list and my career goals, I really only cared about crossing off the fun things that came along with being a WWE superstar. Winning dance contests, getting an action figure, a cool t-shirt, being in a video game, a movie. <laughs> Which, of course, brings me to The Miz. What's up, buddy? I see you. <laughs> yeah. There were a lot of parallels between our personalities, which explains why I wasn't that liked, and also why we made such good adversaries. I mean, who could forget our legendary battle over the lead role in Rank and File 4? Can you believe they're all the way up to Rank and File 7 now? No, I can't. I thought they would have stopped making them after your performance. Wow. Didn't realize this was a roast. No, it's just that you definitely had some interesting priorities earlier in your career. First, it was the movie. Then, you were obsessed with getting your own action figure. It was on the list since day one. Yeah, which made you super jealous when I got one before you did. Remember this? Are you still a little bit jealous? No. Are you sure? I think you're exaggerating how I reacted. <laughs> Really? Because that's not how I remember it. In all seriousness, even though it wasn't as important to me, it was pretty cool when not long after that you got your first action figure and crossed it off our list. But the fact we had different priorities is partly what made this work, because let's be honest, if we'd been competing for the same things, I'm not sure we could have been friends. You were just always so driven to be the best. Maybe. But it's not like I was only focused on individual goals. Like, what about when we went to SmackDown Live and I ended up teaming with someone who was a great influence and mentor to me? I'm talking about Mickey James, of course! Stand up and take a bow, Mickey, you deserve it. And that's how Mickey James went from being a hero and mentor of mine to more than that. She was now my tag team partner and more importantly, my friend. Oh, that's nice. But aren't you skipping over a pretty important part? How about we move on? Don't you want to talk about when you were on the cover of WWE 2K25? I do, but hang on a second. Earlier you put me on blast for having some trivial goals. So now it's my turn to call you out for a time when you let the list steer you down a questionable path. This is a night to remember our careers, good and bad. Fine. If you want to talk about it so much, then you tell the story. Okay. After they became tag team champions, it turned everything around for Mickey. She even ended up earning a SmackDown Live Women's Championship opportunity against Kyrie Sane. And that's how I won my first SmackDown Live Women's Championship. 
That totally sucked the air out of the room. That's why I wanted to skip over that part of the story. I I'll distract him with the visual aid. With everything we'd accomplished, we were really starting to cement our legacies, especially in our hometown where we'd always been overshadowed by a certain individual, until this happened. That is a beautiful sign, don't you think? I agree. I would never throw rocks at a sign like that. Even though we were gaining respect and recognition, I still felt like I had a lot more to prove than Red. She had won championships everywhere we went, and I only had my universal title win over Samoa Joe that was mostly considered a fluke. Sure, I started a movie, but that sort of thing didn't hold the same weight. So I sought out the advice from someone who was a visionary in this business. A man who had been the guiding force behind the careers of countless legendary superstars. And that's how we opened a portal to the netherworld and summoned the Undertaker to the Earth Realm so I could defeat him and cement my Hall of Fame legacy. Uh, we're fine, thanks. I told you they wouldn't believe it. You know what? I, none of that crazy stuff ever happened. I, I mean, sure, I, I beat the Undertaker, you all witnessed that, but, but could you imagine all that other wacky stuff? <laughs> Portals and Marsh Ladies and Papa Shango? <laughs> yeah, gotcha, joke's on you! <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get back to things that actually happened. Like when I was the longest reigning women's champion of the modern era, holding the SmackDown Live Women's Championship for over two and a half years. If only security had done their jobs that night, Samoa Joe never would have made it past the arena's metal detector. Sorry, just trying to keep it positive. Which is hard to do because our story wouldn't be complete without talking about one giant negative. I'm referring, of course, to the arrival of the American hero, Brooklyn Von Braun in WWE. Because of Brooklyn, our lives and careers would never be the same. Although if you think about it, they were pretty much the same as they'd always been because no matter where we went or what we accomplished, we could never escape Brooklyn's loud, obnoxious shadow. We gave Brooklyn a lot of chances to prove she had changed. Well, mostly Trey did. But ultimately, she only proved one thing. She was the exact same bully she was way back when we were in high school. And she wasn't just a jerk to us. She disrespected anyone she dealt with, including WWE legends. And that's how I won the WWE Divas Championship, crossing off one of the most Look, elusive them. things on be. the list. I, but the, the Divas Championship that's wasn't them. just a title. That's my mom and dad. It was more than that. It was- uh, uh, Sorry, I, I think something amazing just happened. Earlier today, I received a note saying I would finally get to meet my birth parents at the Hall of Fame ceremony tonight, and I, I think they just arrived. I don't know I, what's I, happening I apologize either. if I'm a little distracted. Who are those just, people? I've been waiting for this, this moment my entire life. We're, we're almost done here, so I'll, I'll catch up with you real soon, okay? Uh, sorry, again, for cutting you off. Where were you? Uh, there's n really not much left to say other than to cover how we ended up here tonight. Man, feels like we've been up here for like 15 hours. Hope everyone's still with us. But uh, I think that pretty much sums everything up, right? Yeah, I think we covered it all. And there's only one thing left to do. List, please. <laughs> it's time to cross off one final list item together. Get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Shoot, I think I forgot a pen. Seriously? I've got one you can use. I I'm sure someone else in this arena has a spare pen, so you can go sit down. Take it easy. I just wanted to come up here in front of the world to say congratulations and finally put our differences behind us. 
I would never do anything to take away from your special night that you so rightfully deserve. Trey, even your birth parents are here, which is amazing. Stand up, please. But before you finish up, there's just one thing I want to mention that you left out of your speech. You see, Red wasn't 100% honest about what led to her retirement and later her best friends. In fact, it turns out she has a little secret, which is the real reason she walked away from WWE. You have to do something. She's gonna ruin everything. I'm sorry, but I'm done hiding this for us. It's over. What really happened was I found out the truth behind this secret, and she didn't want me to tell anyone. So she chose to retire instead. But I couldn't sit back and let her get away without everyone knowing the real Red. So let's start with this. That lovely older couple in the audience, they're not Trey's parents. I know, because they're fakes I hired to be here. That letter you got that said they were coming tonight, also a fake. But if you want to see your real parents, I can make that happen. Here they are. Yeah, that pretty much says it all. And look at the date there. They were already long gone by the time we were in high school. Which makes you wonder, Trey, how could they have written you a letter? Maybe someone else wrote it to try to manipulate you into doing whatever they wanted. And maybe that person was so miserable and lonely, they had to resort to something morbid like that to ensure they always had a friend at their side. But who would do such a terrible thing? Certainly not your so-called best friend, right? Is this true? We're not finished here. If you come any closer, I will crush his neck. And the same goes for anyone else. If you try to stop us, I will end him. Do you need me to make another ice machine run? You know, there's some wounds that ice can't heal. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, you have to admit, that was a pretty cheesy line. <laughs> you know, you have a really strange way of apologizing. I'm sorry. It's just... We've been working through this all night, and I think I'm starting to lose it. <laughs> Look, you know how I truly feel. You also know me better than anyone else. I made a stupid decision to protect you when we were kids, and it just kept escalating from there. I wanted to tell you so many times, but it got 
harder and harder, especially when you started leaving the tickets. I couldn't bring myself to take that away from you. It would be like you finding out that America's Next Top hand model was fixed. Wait, is it? Did you hear something? <laughs> no. I was just using that as an example. <sighs> okay. Because I don't think I can handle that right now. I think I always knew, deep down, that it was all too good to be true. That I'd never meet them. But I guess a part of me wanted to believe that maybe something bigger would come out of all of this. That it wasn't just about action figures or championships or entertaining millions of people. That it would help me find a part of myself that was missing. But maybe something bigger did come out of all of this. This wasn't about finding two people who would fill a hole in your life. It was about millions of people finding you to fill holes in their lives. <laughs> <laughs> now that was cheesy. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> Maybe. I have something for you. Please don't tell me this is a letter from my long lost aunt and uncle telling me to forgive my best friend. Just open it. What's this all about? It's our new list. On one of my ice machine runs, or maybe it was one of the times you locked me out of the room, I can't remember, but I made some phone calls to management, and it's unprecedented, but they've agreed to let us get revenge on Brooklyn and Samoa Joe at tomorrow night's WrestleMania. Assuming you're on board. I guess we're coming out of retirement. This has to be some kind of record. <laughs> There's one other thing you need to know. Brooklyn and Samoa Joe agreed to the match, but only if we put our Hall of Fame spots on the line. You really want to do this? If we don't fight back after what they did, then we don't deserve those spots. Package deal. I'm in. Hey, just wanted to let you know, I left two open seats in the audience just like you always did. Why? I mean, obviously my birth parents aren't showing up anytime soon. So was it just for good luck or out of respect or something? You'll see. I know you're gonna tell us it's not too late to change our minds about the match and putting our Hall of Fame spots on the line, but we need to do this. I wasn't gonna say that at all. It's actually way too late to change your minds. The match is happening. Oh. Okay, well, that's good then. I was going to say that if things don't go well, Brooklyn and Samoa Joe can't erase your legacies. Everything you worked for and accomplished won't just disappear. It sounds like you don't think we can win. Look, you both have defied the odds before, but I'm just being realistic. <laughs> when it comes time to honor the Hall of Fame class tonight, We'll be out there front and center. It's time for the greatest spectacle in sports entertainment. Welcome to WrestleMania. If you've somehow been off the grid for the past 24 hours, then you missed the news that we have a huge last minute change to tonight's event. After being ambushed at the conclusion of their Hall of Fame speech, Red and Trey will seek revenge against Brooklyn Von Braun and Samoa Joe. And saying that the stakes are high feels like a severe understatement. If Brooklyn and Samoa Joe can defeat Red and Trey, they will take their spots in the WWE Hall of Fame. And we've never seen anything like this before, and it's highly improbable we ever will again. With respect to every competitor who enters the ring tonight and every championship that's contested, it's now time for the most important match of the evening. Red and Trey are here to take on Brooklyn Von Braun and Samoa Joe with their Hall of Fame spots on the line. It's truly impressive Red and Trey overcame both physical and emotional trauma to be here tonight. But I suppose revenge can motivate someone to do just about anything, including putting everything they've dreamed of and worked for at risk. Uh, guys, what are these pieces of paper falling down from above? I believe it's supposed to symbolize their new list, and there's only one thing on it. 
beat Brooklyn and Samoa Joe at WrestleMania. This is why I left the two seats. It's time to move on. I'm glad you're here. I think that might have been Trey's adoptive parents sitting at ringside. I think you're right, Myron. And now here are the two superstars who want nothing more than to take everything from Red and Trey to essentially erase their legacies in a single night. It's the so-called American hero, Brooklyn Von Braun and Samoa Joe. Yeah, these two have a much different kind of bond than Red and Trey. It's an affiliation based on shared hatred for their opponents tonight, dating back years in both cases. Full disclosure, I think we're looking at the newest members of the WWE Hall of Fame class. Brooklyn and Samoa Joe have been unstoppable from both a mental and physical standpoint since the moment they joined forces. Red and Trey would have a hard time stopping them if they were at full strength, and we know they're not even close to that. And there you see Red and Brooklyn facing off. There is so much history between these two. We're talking decades of hostility. I don't know if it'll ever end, but we'll get at least some kind of resolution after tonight's contest is over. We're not sure who's going to start the match tonight. It actually looks like Brooklyn and Samoa Joe are discussing that right now. Apparently, it'll be Samoa Joe and Trey. Brooklyn's going to make Red wait to get her hands on her. Yet another calculated move from the American hero. This is it. Here we go. Trey escapes the Yurinagi. And now he's got Samoa Joe in the Coquina clutch. Red takes Brooklyn down. Hold on. Is this actually happening? It is. Red and Trey of Brooklyn Von Braun and Samoa Joe locked in their own submission holes. After everything that's happened among these four adversaries, this feels like the perfect ending. Don't get ahead of yourself. They need to actually finish them off. Can Red and Trey do the unthinkable? Will Brooklyn and Samoa Joe give up? They tapped. It's over. Red and Trey have pulled off the impossible and ensured that they will forever be honored in the WWE Hall of Fame. This match takes place 20 times, and on 19 of those occasions, Brooklyn and Samoa Joe get the win, but not tonight. This was special. This was your night, Red and Trey. Congratulations for the second time on your Hall of Fame induction. This might have been our first time seeing one of your matches in person, but we were always watching on TV. We're proud of you, son. Can I, I, I still call you that? Yeah. We have a lot of catching up to do. I'm sorry about that. We all are. It's okay. We, we, we have something for you. There's some maintenance guy from the arena was selling it online. It wasn't cheap. Luckily, we've gotten good at puzzles in our old age. Oh, my gosh. I thought I lost you. Back. There's one thing left on there we need to finish crossing off. <laughs> it appears that the list has somehow been salvaged. Red and Trey can now pick up where they left off two nights ago. Tonight we witnessed the unexpected, an unexpected victory, an unexpected reconciliation, and finally the unexpected return of what some might think is just an old scrap of paper. But it was more than that to Red and Trey. It's what led them to this very moment that to them was expected all along. They may not have known how they'd end up here, but they knew when they created that list that this was their destiny.
Well said, Michael. Soak every bit of this in. Red and Trey, you deserve it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the winners of tonight's match and still members of the WWE Hall of Fame, Red and Trey.